Ecto Sage here on the Sage channel, it's Sleep Art Game and Eat, and today I'm looking at boarding ships. Now, after the recent patch, or actually it was probably a week ago now, but the patch that added landing gears, a lot of people were suggesting I make small ships that would pierce enemy vessels and then grab hold of all the troops from said attack ship or boarding ship flood it into that ship to take it over or damage stuff from the inside. And I do have a few ships that are designed with that principle, but first I want to show this ship, which is an idea that maybe you could have a stealth version. Now, while this ship is in works, or while the ship is attacking, I should say, it would actually have all of its guns off to draw less attention to itself. The black was to blend in, but I'm not sure how well it works. I think gray might actually blend in a bit better. And on the inside, you can actually see I have three gravity generators here. If you're going for full stealth, those will actually be off. And because you won't have gravity generators on, everyone will be in these seats here. And of course, they're control seats because there are no passenger seats in the game right now. So <laughs> you're just going to have to trust ever that everyone in those seats isn't going to be pressing buttons while the actual pilot's back here. Also, we have an emergency power supply and the respawn point that way once this ship is docked which actually it has its landing gears right here and here once it's latched onto its enemy vessel and turned on these two guns to cut into said enemy vessel then as troops pour and die they can hopefully respawn up here from this run down here and instantly get back into the action. Now if this ship docks on the bottom side of a ship and you want to completely discombobulate anybody on board the enemy ship, you can turn on these gravity generators, at which point people won't even have to use those seats, they could actually just stand in here or wherever they like on this small vessel. But once you get up to the enemy ship and you're upside down, the people inside the enemy ship, as long as they don't have more than three gravity generators, will find their gravity flipped because these three gravity general generators will outnumber their one generator, unless of course they're prepared for it. Uh, on top of the ship you do see I have a caterpillar small vessel to get around, I just docked that there for the time being. The back of the ship you see I have the two big engines there, there's actually another set behind those, so just all in all four forward facing engines like that. Along the bottom we only have those three to go up, the two there for this side and the two there. We got six for reverse to try to counter the massive ones on the back and then a few up here on top. All in all it's not the best maneuvering ship. If I was to do it again I'm not sure how exactly I would change it because I started out with basically this room and then built on from there because I wanted it to be as small as possible but clearly it started growing bigger and bigger. Now really quickly I've lined this up pretty well if you look dead ahead at a rectangular base way out there. I'm actually going to take this over there and sort of demonstrate how it would be to dock, land, and breach an enemy base. Hopefully this ship would jump in and begin its attack run after the main attack on whatever station has begun, that way they wouldn't be looking for it. Or if it is possibly to be completely stealth, maybe you would accelerate up and kill all the reactors, that way they wouldn't see you coming. Either way, you'd either want to do this while the main enemy is distracted, or do it before they're even aware you're there using maybe something like disabling your reactors. Anyway, you'd get the ship up, presumably on a larger station or ship than this. This is a, just a small research station that I built, well, actually only for this purpose. You'd get up to it, you'd try to get down and land on it. Maybe your engines would be wearing the metal, maybe not. There we go, we got two locks, so let's lock those in place. And now, we could go and board the enemy ship through there, and this is actually the point where even if you're going stealth, you'd activate these two turrets to cut away at the metal down here of the enemy vessel and breach into their base, and then begin causing any damage that you can to their actual systems there. Now, because it's hard to navigate while everything's upside down inside that research station, I'm actually going to go in here and not press that button, press this button, I'm going to disable the gravity generators, that way it's easier to walk around. And this would also be how it would be if you were going on complete stealth. Even though now they would be aware that you're there, it might be easier to fight being the right way up inside the enemy vessel. So let's really quickly run in here, drop, oh, nope, run up into the enemy vessel and you can see we docked inside what would be working areas and the, one of the main hallways. But luckily, right across the door is where the generators are, so if you knew where you wanted to cut through, you could actually cut through in a very, very good spot, and come up right inside here and instantly take out all their stuff. Basically taking out their generators and downing all their defenses and everything all at once, disabling their respawn areas or whatever else they might have. Unless, of course, 
you know, like this, that, like I do on this ship, have a emergency reactor just for the respawn area, which is what I have, oh, if I can actually get in here, right there in the back corner, that's an emergency generator. Now, really quickly, I'm going to go in here, going to turn on those gravity generators again, and that way I'm not being tossed about whenever I get out of this for a second, even though now the whole station's upside down, I'm going to decouple this and get us away from that station. And then I have one more ship to show you. Now it's not this big huge one that's right below me right now, that's, ooh, dang, damage something. That is going to be in my next video, and that is basically another boarding ship, but it's designed to keep fighting even after it's deployed its troops, and it's not just going to sit there like this one would. Uh, where is my, this other ship I built? Let me, uh, easier to, oh, okay. What the heck's going on? I'm being pushed against the back wall even though the gravity generators are on. That's a bit weird. Uh, let's just get out here. Oh, oh I guess I had my jetpack on and didn't know it. My bad. Uh, we need to get in that caterpillar and find the other large ship I built for boarding purposes. There we go, in the caterpillar. There we go, undocked it, turned all the systems back on. Now we can fly away so we don't hit that little ship. And words. This is a very strange ship, the one I'm trying to find right now. And it's designed basically on the principle of ram and randomly grab. And I thought I lined it up and put it somewhere out there in space. Is it? Oh, there it is. Jeez, I was almost heading in the right direction already with that other ship. Anyway, this ship is basically pretty ugly. But it's designed on the idea that you can impact on any side, and as long as one of these grappling or landing gears gets close enough, it can connect to enemy target and then start sending troops out to attack. Now, of course, if the enemy is moving, it might be a bit harder to get into the enemy ship compared to the other one that can grapple hold and get a good suction point, because this one probably won't, because it's designed to be moving at speed when it hits it. And, of course, you see this triangle opening here. That is the only way out. So I'm going to just abandon the caterpillar right there, and I'm going to take this ship for a spin and try to demonstrate its workings. It's a pretty simple ship, reactor between each one of the four engines that face on each side, and six gyroscopes on each side as well so it's pretty maneuverable and inside this main cube here if we fly in here no pressure or anything special emergency reactors for it, these respawn points so people can just keep respawning and flooding out and of course it's such a haphazard weird design because you don't know which side exactly you'll be impacting whatever you're attacking with so now let's quickly try to get it up to speed and hit that big rectangular ship again Whew, I was a bit afraid I was going to hit that for a second. Nope, missed it. Now we're up to a pretty good speed. And I've parked something in the way that I forgot about. Whatever. Crash through that. No harm done. And just get any of these landing gears near it. You can see it's already done a lot of damage to itself and other things. And there, one landing gear caught on the far right there. It's taken a lot of damage. The pilot in this ship, I know it's a terrible design in a lot of ways, but the idea is the pilot in this ship would actually stay in the ship while the troops continue you know, continue spawning from here, oh no, uh, and flying out wherever they can to board the enemy ship. Now of course this works pretty well against stations because they're not going to be flying away, but against other things, like other ships, it would probably be a really problematic because the ship will try to fly away and you'll be out here being thrown around because your jetpacks won't be able to keep up with it. So this is, it's basically just an idea I wanted to show, but it's not practical at all. The idea that some one of my commenters had about having a big long needle thing pierce it is probably better, and I do have an idea in the works for that, but I'm not going to show that because I haven't built it. Because it's probably going to end up being some monstrous thing as big as that first stealth ship. Uh, another idea I do have in the works is this thing. I'll just give you a really quick preview of that. And the idea behind this one is that basically this ship would jump in, it would start battling, but it would try to get itself above whatever enemy target it wanted to hit, and I seem to have lost the little things I was looking for, and along in the bottom here you might be saying, oh this, this looks a bit weird, are these docking bays or whatever, well yes they are docking bays, but not for ships that can really easily pilot, here we go, they're for these small, basically, well needles. And basically what would happen is the ship would line itself up above the enemy target. The ship doesn't currently have any controls. 
uh, these little buggers would activate their engines, release, jettison, they only have one direction they can go in, which is down, so you basically just hold C, but if they are properly lined up, when you ejected, you just hold C all the way until you hit your enemy target. Now let's just try to really quickly line this up and do a good hit, and boom, and that was a scaping blow, or ah, a scuff, I, I bounced off. I bounced off and all went wrong. But ideally, which I will get to show you properly in the next video, is this thing actually can pierce through enemy ships, and then you can just hop out and you'd be fine and dandy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, that ship should be done by the end of the day, and the ship video should be uploading. No promises, though. Because if it's like everything else I've tried to build that ends up getting bigger and bigger, the game gets laggier and laggier and more unstable until I'm crashing every, you know, seven minutes. Even if I am using mods to up the amount of RAM it's using, I end up with a small amount of trouble there. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.